In this video, we'll see some examples of how to solve equations using factoring. In our first example, we've got the equation x squared minus 9x equals 0. Let's watch what happens when we factor the left-hand side of that equation. For x squared minus 9x, we can pull out a common factor of x, which gives us x times x minus 9 equals 0. So how does that help? Well, because we have a 0 on the right-hand side, and because we have a factored expression on the left-hand side, what this is telling us is that when we multiply these two numbers together, x times x minus 9, the result is 0. But there aren't too many ways that we can multiply two numbers together and get an answer of 0. In fact, the only way to multiply two numbers together and get 0 is if one of those two numbers is 0. So the only way this can be true is if x is 0 or x minus 9 is 0. Sometimes I'll call that the magical property of zero. And that magical property of zero is that the only way you can multiply two numbers and get zero is if one of those two numbers is zero. So that means that x equals zero is one of our solutions. And the other solution isn't too hard to figure out from this other equation. Let's just add nine to both sides, and we get our other solution as x equals nine. Okay, what about this one? x squared plus four x equals 21. Well, given our success in the previous problem, we might try to factor the left-hand side. Let's factor out an x. x times x plus 4 equals 21. But we immediately run into a problem here. 0 had that nice property that there was only one way that we could multiply two numbers together and get 0. But 21, there's a lot of different ways we can multiply numbers together to get 21. 3 times 7, 21 times 1, negative 3 times minus 7. Heck, there's a lot of other options if we start using fractions. So factoring here isn't helpful. We didn't do anything wrong, it's just not helpful. It's not helping us find an answer to our, uh, our equation. So instead what we're going to do is use, try to use the property of zero. And the property of zero is going to help us out if we can move everything over to the left-hand side. Let's subtract 21 from both sides. And now we've got that zero. So now if we try to factor the left-hand side, let's see what we get. We're looking for two numbers that multiply together to be negative 21 and add together to be positive 4. And a little trial and error would tell us that what we get is x plus 7 and x minus 3. And now we're closer to the situation that we had in the previous problem, where we have a factored left-hand side and we have a 0 on the right-hand side. So that means that the only way that the product of these two numbers can be 0 is if one of the two numbers is itself 0. So that means that either x plus 7 is 0, or x minus 3 is 0. That's the only way it could happen. So that means that either x equals negative 7, or x equals positive 3. And those are my two solutions to this equation. Let's do one more example. This one is a third degree equation, so it looks a little difficult right off the bat, but we can factor it. If we pull out an x, we get x times x squared plus 4x plus 4 equals 0. And now ignoring the x for a moment, we can factor that quadratic. All we need are two numbers that multiply together to be positive 4 and add together to be positive 4. And what we might realize is that the two numbers we need are positive 2 and positive 2. So now we've got a product of three numbers that equals 0. This number times this number times this number equals 0. But the property of 0 is still true. The only way you can multiply numbers together and get an answer of 0 is if one of the numbers you multiplied is 0. So that means that either x equals 0 or x plus 2 equals 0 or x plus 2 equals 0. Notice that we have a repeat equation. So that means that we only are going to have two solutions to this equation, either x equals 0, or x equals negative 2, or x equals negative 2 again. But that's just the same solution we already had.